Prince Edge of the place, they had bad luck. Off the water wagon with both feet. Water is good. Frozen it will keep and keep it. Far, far away from me. Just as far as I can see. And a little bit farther. I'm no... Hello, Mike. Wake up. You're walking in your sleep. Well, it'd do you a lot of good to do a little walking. The force lost a great man in you, Murphy. After taking a good look at you two, Muggs, I'm sure of it. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, ha. I bet he's a left-hander. Business improving. Well, I hope so. But it won't do you much good. And the poor devil. Mike, Mike, is that you? It is, Mike himself. What's eating you, Pete? You're shaking like a jitterbug. As I was going by Klein's jewelry store, I thought I'd seen a light. I goes up, tries the door, and it's unlocked. Then you left the door unlocked, huh? No, no. The door was open. Now he flashes on the lights. Ah, uh -huh. then you set off the burglar alarm? I did not. It had been put out of order. I phoned the office, and they're up at the store now working on it. So I comes down here on my way home. I can't figure how these crooks cut off that alarm system. Yeah? yeah. Well, there was nothing stole tonight. <laughs> ah, you old turtle. Your, your job is still safe. Go ahead and laugh, you big hyena. <laughs> How about that dress shop robbery I had last month? Hmm, I was afraid I had another one. Ah, uh, getting soft in the head. You better go home and get a good sleep. I think your taxi cab is coming, uh, Mr. Murphy. Right on the dot. That's service for you. He's been driving you home for five years. You ought to buy him a new horse. Horse? Sure, I'm supporting one of his cows for him now. And besides, my company's worth something. <laughs> That ain't worth the wag of a cow's tail. I uh, have my own business. <laughs> well, I'll see you tonight. Not if I see you first. <clears throat> Man, and never mind the meter. And whom are you expecting, Mrs. Murphy? Brian Baru? How you all right, Murphy? You haven't been nipping. If I felt any better, me dear little shamrock, I'd need an operation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's enough of that now. Go on, sit down there and have your breakfast. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Commissioner. Hello, Captain. And how are all the doorknobs? They're right? doing fine, my dear young Flatfoot. Polished up beautifully. Hello, darling. Hello, Ma. Anything happened last night? No, I have everything under control. You know I'm the best cop on my beat. Oh, go on. You're blarney, just like your old man. I'll get your eggs. It's a fine career you picked out for yourself. Pounding pavements for the city for the rest of your life. It's okay with me, Dad. I'll get a promotion soon. And a little raise, and then Kathleen and I will talk business. Mm. Stop your gabbing, you two. Here, eat something. Say, Ma, you know you're a better chef than Maurice at the Waldorf. Why, Terry, when were you at the Waldorf? Kathleen and I dine there quite often. How often? Almost once a year. My, my, a cop eating at the Waldorf. Don't let the commissioner see you. He'll think you stole something. Now, hurry up, you two. Your food's getting all cold. Listen, Terry. You can't get anywhere on the force. 
Why, man alive, there's over 20,000 of you looking for promotion. What chance have you got? It's a steady job, good pay, and a chance for advancement. I like the work, and in my old age, I get a pension. Now, don't you worry, Dad. Before you've turned the corner, I'll be the commissioner of police. Or at least a detective. Kathleen's a fine girl. Like a daughter to us. But she'd be a lot happier if you were in some nice, safe business. Hey, Ma, any cops in there? Hello, Pop. Go on, son. Well, how's the great detective? Is that funny? Why, you couldn't even run down a hill. I wouldn't have to. We have one in the family. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you two boys ought to be in the red. Listen, copper, I'm doing all right. And I'll never get any flat feet, either. You're right, Joseph. But you're liable to get your head flat and working for that crook Moran some night. Well, it's about time you came to see us. You know, you haven't been here for two or three weeks. Hiya, Mom. I know I'm guilty, but I've had a lot of things to attend to. You know how it is. I'm a busy man. Yeah, I know how it is. You're too busy to come and see your father and your mother. Ma, you can sure whip up a swell cup of coffee. What's the matter with Daisy? Can't she make coffee? Sure. She has as much practice as you. Well, you can always drop in here for a bite. Oh, uh, here you are, Mom. And uh, keep the change. Don't you dare to offer me money. Sure. Buy yourself a new hat. I will. <laughs> and a pair of shoes, too. <laughs> Sounds like somebody in the hall. Maybe it's Kathleen. If you both were smart, you'd get out of those monkey suits and grab yourself some real money. You're both working for peanuts. We can't all be clever like you, Sonny Boy. Hello, darling. Come on in. Ah, the whole Murphy clan. Hello, dear. Hello. Hiya, Kathleen. Honey, sit down and have some coffee. No, thanks, Terry. I've got to get down to the office early today. We're making out the weekly payroll, and is it a job? I just stopped in on the way downstairs to tell you that I have to work this afternoon. I'm sorry, it spoils our date, but I can see you tonight. Sorry, but you can't. I have to be at the garden. Special assignment. Oh, gosh, and this is the only night this week we could be together. My, my, now ain't that too bad. Say, honey, tell me this. How'd this dumb flatfoot ever handcuff you? <laughs> Why, Joe, don't you remember? He saved my life one day. Oh, I get it. Love at first fright, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Do I kill me? That might be a good idea, too. Listen, baby, why don't you forget this mug? You never know when you're going to see him, and if you do, he may be full of holes. Uh -huh. <laughs> he's, he's, he's got something there. <laughs> now, uh, take me, for instance. Plenty of dough, continue around to nightclubs. Nice work if you can get it. And I get it, believe me. Oh, it sounds wonderful, Joe. <laughs> but I'm sorry, he saw me first. Why don't you button your lip? Now, Terry, there's no reason to lose your temper. <laughs> I simply must run along now. I'll see you to the door, honey. Officer, will you please release me? See you soon, folks. Bye-bye, dear. Bye-bye. Oh, she's a darling girl, Terry. Someday you're going to talk yourself to death. What's the matter? Jealous of my technique? Why, easy. Take it easy, Terry. Sure, Joe was only jolly and Kathleen. Sure, relax. I don't have to muscle in on you. I got plenty of girlfriends of my own. That's a fine way for a married man to be talking. Say, can't you folks take a little kitten? Uh, Sorry, I must be going. I got to get back to Moran's office before he finds out he can run the trucking business without me. <laughs> I'll be seeing him. He's going to get round shoulders someday from patting himself on the back. <laughs> No, it's not a 50-50 split. Now get this. He's supposed to have 10,000. You tell him he gets 2,000 and you bring the rest here. Right. Okay. I was up Harlem last night. The boys tell me Joe's burning up the town, spending plenty. Hello, Ace. Hello, Joe. Hi, you Blackie. Hello, Hello, Joe. Hello, Joe. I don't know how he does it. He don't get in none of them big jobs here. And I know his cut from Moran. Maybe the kid's taking the cup Moran doesn't know anything about. That might be so. He's a double-crosser. Chisels in and marries my girl when I wasn't looking. Yeah. Yeah. A, a big truck. <laughs> well, that's a laugh. We're going to do some legitimate business today. Some poor sap wants us to move him over to Brooklyn. Hey, Ace, come here. I hope that guy's furniture gets to Brooklyn. 
Grab a truck and get a couple of the boys and move this guy's furniture. What is this? We ain't in a moving business. Go on. The exercise will do you good. Okay, but I ain't gonna move no pianos. Sir. Listen, I want you to go out the track this afternoon. But who's gonna be on the phone to juries to take the daily bets? Not you. This is important. I want you to take this two grand and put it on running wild. On the nose. But why can't I phone it in as usual? I want you at the track. And get this. Wait till the horses go to the post before you place the bet. Oh, I get it. You don't want to knock the odds down, huh? <laughs> you catch on fast. But keep your trap shut and don't sound off in town. Okay, boss, your money. And see that you take good care of it. And remember, running wild on the nose. You know, uh, I may put a little on that myself. See you later. Oh, wait a minute. Mo will take you out in his cab. Thanks, boss. That's service for you. Blackie, come here. What's up, boss? I'm sending Joe out the track this afternoon. That kid will have at least 10,000 on him. That's a lot of coconuts. See that he gets back with it. We'll be counting it at seven. Leave it to me. You're smart, you lay off. What happened? What's the matter with him? But he running wild one the last time out, but he's been off his feed this week. What do you think, Bugs? You got me, pal. What'd he do yesterday? I didn't clock him, but the owner looked pretty sour. And I was depending on this race to get even. Don't take my word for it. If I could pick him, I'd own this track. I gotta be careful. I'm not using my own money. I gotta be extra careful, because I am. I know. I'm gonna phone the boss. It's crazy. Running wild, 50 bucks on the nose. 50 bucks on the nose and running wild. Can you look at him? It's nearly post time. Rand left the office a half an hour ago. But running wild looks bad. Yeah, I know, but I just heard it. Don't let anyone touch off him. Moran knows what he's doing. How do you like that Count Rossi on the next race? I think he's got a chance, man. A good show on the last 2,000. Time. Running wild on the nose. Today, it's too late, they're off. Yeah, but he's going to win. Look. He's running away from the field. Running wild wins all by himself. How do you like that? Were you on him? Sure, I know what I'm doing. What will I do? Frank Moran expects $10,000 back. He'll never believe I didn't bet. Boy, you're in a spot. Moran will be awfully mad. If I were you, I'd leave town. Oh, I've been an awful sap. I shouldn't have waited so long. Well, there's still one more race. That Count Rossi should pay off today. Yeah? How do you know? I was out here clocking him every morning. That horse can run faster than they say he does, or my watch is crazy. I'm placing a bet right now. Listen, Louie, give me Count Rossi. 50 to win, 50 to place. Are you sure he'll run the money, Bugs? Didn't I just bet my own money on him? Yeah, I know, but I gotta be careful. Well, why don't you bet him to show? That page five to one. He's sure to be in the money. 
Come on, it's the last race. It's post time. All right, I'll do it. Two thousand on Count Rossi the show, and two hundred on the nose. See you after the race. Maybe. <laughs> Joe. Oh, hello, Bluggy. Well, you paid off. Moran's right again. Yeah. Were you on Run a while too? Sure. I always play the same horses as the boss. Yeah, sure. He's a good picker. Come on, I better get back to town. Moran's waiting. Wait about five minutes, Bluggy. I got a couple hundred on the next race. Okay, your money. Still running. Come on, Sap. Well, uh, I gotta make a phone call, Blackie. I'll be back in a minute. Better wait till you get back to town. But I promised I'd call right after the last race. Forget it. She'll never miss you. Come on. I'll get the cab. Wait a minute. I got a phone whether you like it or not. Okay, but don't blow your tougher. Go ahead and make it fast. Hey, there's one over there. Buy a dog, Mo. Stick around, we'll be going in a minute. Yes, but Daisy, I'm in a jam. I gotta get out of town. I lost Moran's money. Okay, I'll meet you at Grand Central. You're not going any place, you dirty double crosser. Let go of me, Blackie. Jerry, I just got in. Yeah, I know. Running wild one. <laughs> well, I haven't missed one yet. We'll see you tomorrow. Nice going, boss. I wish I knew where you get your tips. Never mind that. The boy should be here any minute now. Yeah, it's only about an hour's drive from the track. Mo can do it fast. Benny, I'm going to throw a little party tonight and celebrate. Go over the corner and get some of my special brand. Okay, boss. Hey, boss! What's the matter with you? Blackie was shot at the track. Blackie shot? Who did it? Yeah, well, well, him and Joe got in a fight and the gun went off. Where's Joe now? Well, he beat it with the money. Why didn't you stop him, you sap? Well, there wasn't time. The cops was all over the place. Ace was right. He said that rat Murphy would crush you. Shut up. Now, get this. You and the boys go out and find Joe before the cops find out who did this. Anybody see you with Blackie and Joe at the track? Well, sure. The bookie saw us together. What will I do? I'm afraid they'll pick me up. The cops are liable to be here any minute. If they pick you up, Joe will be next. Huh. Now, you beat it up the camp and stay there to hear from me. Okay. Now, get this. You and the boys go out and pick up Joe and get that money right away. If he hasn't got it on him, you know how to make him talk. Suppose the cops grab him first. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Once he's in jail, we'll never find out where the money is. Now, beat it. I'll phone you the first thing that happens. It again. Well, I hope they kill each other up. She had some other kind of a job. Now, well, why don't you stop worrying, Mom? I'll live to be 105. There isn't a bullet made that could kill me. I'll answer it. Hello? It's for you, Mike. I'll see you in the morning, Teddy. Right. Haven't you forgotten something? 
I know, Ma. What's on your mind? I was saving that one for Kathleen. Oh, go on. Don't be so stingy. Uh, Terry, it's from Captain Wallace. I've got to go down to the station with you. Anything happened? Anything wrong? No, no, Mother, I don't know. No, you stop your fretting. You stop your fretting. When did you see Joe last? At breakfast this morning. Who does he go around with? Why does he hang out? I don't know. I never met any of his friends. Why? What has he done? We're not accusing him of anything. Just want to ask him a few questions. Sorry this had to happen, Mike. You better get back on the job. If I need you again, I'll let you know. All right, Walter. Send Murphy in. Hey, Murphy. The captain wants to see you. Yes, sir? I've just been talking to your father about Joe. We've got to pick him up and ask him a few questions. Murphy, you're relieved from regular duty. You're on special assignment. Find your brother and bring him in. Yes, sir. What is it, Terry? It's about Joe, Dad. I've got to pick him up. Oh, no, boy. Oh, no, no. You can't do that. I'm sorry, Dad. It's orders. I can't help it. Yes, sir. Yes. I suppose you're right. No, thanks. That'll be all. It's a good thing we got out of that apartment. Yeah, I know, Daisy, but we can't stay here. I gotta dig up some dough and get out of town. Moran and the cops are both after me. You can't leave this hotel, Joe. You gotta stay here. I'll go out and grab some money, and when I get it, then we can talk about going away. Where are you gonna get that kind of dough? Hi. Could see your family. They'd come through for you. No, oh, they haven't got that kind of money. Besides, you get that flat-footed brother of mine on your trail, and he'd grab me quick. You mean your own brother? Sure. He put the whole family in jail if the commissioner told him to. Where are you going? Never mind. Just sit tight. Now, take it easy, baby. Nice little place you have here. Is there something you wanted? Oh, I get it. You don't know me. But we do have a mutual friend I came to see you about. It's a joke. I'm sure you're mistaken. I'm Mrs. Joe Murphy. Oh, is that what you meant by a mutual friend? Yes. And he's in an awfully tough spot. I thought maybe you might help him out. I'm sorry, I don't understand. You go around with his brother Terry, don't you? Oh, yes, but what's that got to do with it? You're going to marry him, aren't you? That's my business. Will you tell me what you're getting at? Look, there's a mob in this town that'll dump Joe in the river if they can grab him. The publicity will ruin Terry's chances on the force and be the death of his mother. But, but what can I do? We need some money to get out of town quick, and I thought maybe you might lend us some. He's just in a little jam. He's done nothing wrong. I see. Well, if you're telling me the truth, take me to see Joe. After I talk to him, perhaps I might be able to help. That's great. We won't forget it. I told you ten times over that the... Captain only wanted to ask him a few questions. There's nothing serious. I know, but I... I feel that something terrible's happened. Joe's all right, Mom. Why don't you stop crying? Sure, no news is good news. Terry, you're not keeping anything from me, are you? Do the police know where Joe is? No, Ma. I wish they did for Joe's sake. Terry Murphy, I, are you telling me the truth? Will you stop worrying about Joe? He's doing nothing wrong. A bit of a mix-up about a gambler debt and one of the gangsters that Joe knew was killed and uh, the police wanted to ask him a few questions and uh, Joe was afraid to come out of hiding for fear of the gang. Oh, my poor boy. What'll they do to him? I... I... Oh. I'll phone Dr. Hanson. I'm afraid she's very ill, Mr. Murphy. It's her heart. She's had a bad shock. 
she should stay here for a long rest. Joe, why don't you come to me, Joe? Joe. No, have a good sleep, Mother, and I'll bring Joe here to you. It's a terrible thing that my boy has gotten into. If I had the 10,000, I'd give it to you now. Well, uh... There's another way you could pay off. But how? I tell you that I haven't got anything like that kind of money. Let me worry about that. Now, Mike, uh, you work in the wholesale district, don't you? Yes. Why? I think we can pay this debt in a hurry. I don't understand you. Well, uh, there's a on your beat down there that... Uh, if you could arrange to, uh... What's the matter with you, man? What are you doing off your patrol? I just seen a suspicious looking truck heading your way. I didn't like the looks of it, so I thought I'd tip you off. Well, it just covered this block, and I didn't see a thing. Thanks, just the same. You better get back on your beat. All right. I tell you, we waited too long. We should have left as soon as Kathleen gave us that money. Darling, if you don't take hold of yourself, you're going to crack up. I've told you 50 times we can't leave here till things quiet down. We're safe here. Nobody knows about this place. I've got to see Joe. He's not here. How'd you find this place? Never mind how I found it. His mother's at death's door in a hospital. She wants to see him. And he's got to go there. But he's taken an awful chance. Suppose something happens. Oh, wait a minute. I'm not going to any hospital. Do you think I'm crazy? That gang will get me sure. A fine son I've been raising, hiding away like a yellow rat. What is this? Can't you trust your own father? Oh, sure, sure, Pop. But I'm hot as a pistol. I'm afraid the boys will get me. Moran will lay off. I got that fixed. All you got to do is look out for the police. Oh, man, man, will you go? You think I should, Daisy? Yes, I do, Joe. It looks okay. He says Moran's fixed. All right, Pop, I'll go. But I hope you're right. The undertaker will be sending you a bill. Murphy, if I thought you were stalling, I'd throw you off the force. I'm doing everything I can, sir. It's not enough. I want results. I'm warning you now. Don't let family sentiments prevent you from doing your duty. That's all. I'll break this case or it'll break me. I promise you that, sir. I know Joe's in terrible trouble. Oh, I wish I could help him. There, there, darling. Why don't you try to rest? Everything will turn out all right. Hello, Mom. I knew you'd come. I haven't done anything wrong, Mom. Now, don't you believe what the cops in the newspapers say? I won't, Joe. You know, I, I wouldn't lie to you, Ma. 
You're a good boy, Jim. You just got into bad company, that's all. Please, Ma, don't cry. <laughs> Be careful, Terry. She's very ill. Why, oh, Terry, what are you doing here? I just dropped in to see how you are, Mom. <laughs> Terry, don't you do anything to Joe. I won't, Mom. I'm not going with you, Terry. All right, Joe. Terry, Terry, please, please give him a chance. You'd better. Boys, please. If you make this pinch, you'll drag Kathleen in. She's mixed up in this, too. You're lying. He's telling the truth, Terry. Oh! Oh! Kathleen, I want to know what Joe meant. What do you know about this? I can't tell you. I gave my word. You're not going to leave this hospital until you tell me where Joe is. I won't. I haven't got time to argue with you. Tell me what you know. Tell me at once. Hurry up, hon. Have you got everything? Yes, everything, including my brother's go. Well, let Flatfoot catch you when he gets back to headquarters. <gasps> I'm sorry it had to be this way, Joe. Come on. about this cab driver that's missing? I never saw him in my life. Come on now. He was one of Moran's men, wasn't he? Moran's in the trucking business. He didn't own any cabs. Listen, Betty. You better come clean if you know what's good for you. Where's that cabbie? You ain't got nothing on me. There's thousands of taxi drivers in this town. When did you last see Blackie? The afternoon he went to the track with Joe Murphy. Oh, so they went to the track together, eh? Pals, huh? Yeah, that's what Blackie thought. What do you mean by that? Murphy was out to get him. He shot Blackie. Well, you seem to know all about this. Well, all I know is they didn't get along. Why were they sore at each other? Murphy wouldn't pay off a bet. He kept stalling. Okay. You can go now, Benny. But don't take any trips. I sort of like to have you around. Send in that other witness. Jones, you saw the fight at the track, didn't you? Well, uh, I wasn't paying much attention, sir. Uh, I was busy at my stand. Yes, I know, I know. But tell me exactly what you did see. Well, one man was in the phone booth telephoning, and the other man walked over and opened the door of the booth, and then they started fighting. Uh, which man had the gun? I'm not sure, but I think it was the man who was telephoning. Are you sure of that? Did you actually see the man shot? Oh, no, sir. Uh, when they started a fight, why, I ran for help. Okay. That checks with your last statement. Now then, do you believe that you could identify the man who ran away? Oh, yes, sir. I'm sure I could. Is that the man? Yeah, that's him. He's the fella. All right, you can go now, Jones. We'll get in touch with you when we need you. Come on, Murphy, come clean. You might as well confess. Why did you kill Blackie? I tell you, it was an accident. He started fighting with me and his gun went off. Well, somebody's lying and we'll find out who it is. Maybe I'm going to give you one more chance. Why did you kill Blackie Tornado? I tell you, I didn't even touch the gun. I've never owned a gun in my life. Oh, take him out. Oh, wait a minute. I tell you, I didn't do it. If Mo the cabby was here, he could prove it. He saw it. He was with us all afternoon. We'll pick him up within 24 hours. Then we'll find out who's telling the truth. That's all. Go 
Joseph Murphy, you have been found guilty of murder in the second degree. It is the sentence of this court Hello, son. Oh. Hello, Pop. How are you? Oh, what difference does it make? Oh, no, you mustn't lose your hope. Th th things could be a lot worse. Yeah. I could have gotten a chair. No, maybe, maybe the police. The, the, the police will discover new evidence. Yeah, maybe a miracle will happen. Listen, Pop, just forget about me. I'm all through. <laughs> Yes, uh, well, I'll, uh, I'll uh, be, be, be telling your mother that, that you send your love. Huh? Yeah, sure, sure, tell her anything to buck her up. All right, son. Uh, well, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be seeing you. Hello? Hello, Terry. You move right over. I've got to see you. I'll be over right away. He's been railroaded, I tell you. That evidence at the trial was all phony. Moran lied. I know, Daisy, but they proved otherwise in court. I don't care what they proved in court. Joe's a good kid. He's made a few mistakes, but who hasn't? And now he's got to do 20 years. That's the best part of his life. When he comes out, he'll be old and wasted. That is, if he lives that long, and for what? He's not a murderer. I know it. I never believed it myself. That poor kid. We, we were so happy together. I can't stand it, Terry. I'll crack up. You have to keep your nerve, you know, Daisy. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Before Joe went away, did he say anything about the taxi driver that disappeared? Wait. Yeah, he did. He said that guy worked for Moran and nobody'd ever find him. Now, if we can only get some information on that mob, it might help Joe. I'll get it for you, Terry. I'll get it for you if it's the last thing I ever do. Be careful. You're playing with dynamite. Don't worry. I think I got away. Just leave it to me. Good luck. Is Ace Gordon there? Will you put him on, please? Joe? Oh, it's you. Anything I can do for you? No, not a thing. I'm having a wonderful time. Oh, I know how you feel, Joe. You blame me for your being here, but someone would have nabbed you sooner or later. Oh, save your preaching, wise guy. If you'll only cooperate, Joe, I'm sure I can help you. I'm no squealer. If I was, I'd live about a week. They get to you, even in the big house. No, thanks. I'll take it this way. But don't you understand, Joe? I'm only trying to help. I don't want any help from you. Get out! Get out! Scram! All right, Joe. Have it your way. Right. Well, here I am, Moran. What's the idea of the phone call? Oh, just a little social chat, Mike. Uh, sit down. Smoke? No. What do you want of me? That job nice and clean. No kickbacks. Nice going. All right, then why don't you leave me alone? We will, Mike. But first, we need your help. Now, there's a jewelry store on your patrol that's a soft touch, provided you look the other way. I'll have nothing whatever to do with it. I don't want to get tough with you, old-timer. Unless I have to. You can't scare me. I'm through. Listen, if Terry knew that you were in on that last deal of ours, where do you think you'd land? He's already put his brother away. <laughs> Just a minute. You wouldn't tell Terry, would you? Not unless you force me to. Uh, well... What do you want me to do, Moran? 
Now that's better. All you have to do is to be somewhere else when we're pulling the job. This is the last time. Remember that. Sure. Now you're using your head. Get him up. Reach her all you have it. Drop that gun. Turn around and face the wall. Tilly, Tilly. What happened? He had a gun battle with some thieves. We've got to get him to the hospital quick. Oh, no. hey, oh easy, boys. Easy, girl. Please, easy. All right. He's badly hurt. Tell me, Tilly. The boy should have been here a half an hour ago. Something must have gone wrong. I'll take it. Hello? Yeah, he's here. It's Jake. Give me that. Hello, Jake. What's the matter? You did? What? Well, where are you now? Well, where's the gun? Well, stay in that garage until I get in touch with you. Right. The boys got away with the stuff all right. But they shot that young Terry Murphy. Hello. Hello, Ed. You better hustle over here right away. I may need you in a hurry. No, no, just in case things start popping. Yeah, I want you on deck. Shooting a cop, it's the works. They'll throw the key away if they catch him. And Jake said he threw the gun in the sewer on 25th Street. Suppose someone finds it. Cops can't trace that rod. It's an old 38 on a short 32 frame. Larry, the locksmith, put it together for Jake. Here, take this dough over to Joe's garage. Give it to Jake and tell him and the boys to get up to Soller's camp and lay low for a while. Now get going. How's Terry this morning, Mother? Oh, he's all right. But you know, it's been awfully hard for the last six weeks. He has me worried. Why, only this morning he was talking about reporting for duty. So you're going back into the harness again, eh, Terry? Yep, I'm reporting back today. Terry Murphy, don't you dare to leave this house today. Now, don't you worry about me, Mom. I'm as strong as a lion. I can lick a room full of gorillas. Terry, I wish you didn't have to go back. You're a marked man, and that gang will surely try to get you. Maybe, but they'll know they've been in a fight. It's your job, and I suppose you've got to do it. Terry, I wish you wouldn't. First it was Joe, and now if anything happens to you, I'll... The doc reported me fit for duty, Mom. I'll be all right, so stop worrying. I must see him. It's terribly important. He's not seeing anyone. Oh, it was a sorry day when my poor Joe met the likes of you. Look where he is now. I didn't come here to apologize, Mrs. Murphy. I love Joe, too, and I'm trying to help him. But I've got to see Terry. Wait here, then. I'll send him out. And make it snappy, will you? I'm taking plenty of chances coming here. Terry. You have a caller. She's in the hall. What is it, Daisy? I've been out with Ace Garden, trying to pump him. It wasn't easy, but he got drunk last night. 
Did you find out anything? Yeah, a little, but not enough. They're going to stick up a wholesale house near 26th and 10th. It's set for 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock at 26th Street, huh? Yeah. Thanks for the tip. I'm reporting for duty, sir. Good. How's your shoulder? It's a little stiff, but I'll work it out. Well, I'm assigning you to a day patrol. It's easy and safe. You start 8 a.m. tomorrow. Begging your pardon, sir, I'd like to be put on the Midtown Patrol. I want to settle an old score. <laughs> you think you're pretty tough, don't you? Well, that's the way I like them. Go to it. Good luck. Thanks, Captain. Don't worry about this small change, boys. After the job tonight, we'll have plenty to split. Come on. It's time we were getting busy. I got a hunch something may happen around here tonight. Now be careful, boy. What's up? Truck came down the street before and I don't like the looks of it. I saw it turn this corner and heard it stop. Now it's disappeared. I'm gonna find that truck. I'll go with you. Nope, that's what I'm getting paid for. You stay on your job. This is my job. It's my patrol. And I've got to look into it. it might be the silk loft. The freight entrance is down there. You got your gun? Yes, and I'm afraid I'll need it. You must be mistaken, Tilly. I don't see any truck. You're seeing things. Maybe, but I'm gonna make sure. What's this here? You got a key for it? No, no, you'd, you'd have to force that. There's something wrong here. Now go slow. This is a big warehouse. I know another way to get in. All right, but don't take any chances. Be careful, Terry. You're crazy to go in there alone. I'm going in. Get moving. Hurry up. Hurry up. seconds or I'll let you have it. Ah, cut the comedy. I'm busy. You let us in here. Now you're going to try and throw us out. Get out of here and take those rats with you. Drop it and get them up.
arms out and come out with your hands up. Dad, are you hurt bad? Did you... Did you get Moran? No, you did, Dad. You're a good shot. <laughs> Thanks, Teddy. Forgive me, boy. I made a few mistakes. You squared everything tonight, Dad. Oh, oh, oh Murphy. Come here. What do you want? It's my lung. It's curtains for me. Listen. You, you could spring Joe if, if you get hold of that cabbie. We got him stashed up at Salter's camp at Lake George. Make him talk. So, you were in the Adirondacks on a vacation, eh? Yes, yes, that's what I said before. Oh, yeah? Well, where did you get the money to spend a nice long vacation? Moran gave it to you, didn't he? No, he didn't. I, I never knew anybody by the name of Moran. You're lying, Jensen. Moran squealed on you just before he died or so. You're through. Frank wouldn't do that. Oh, so it's Frank now, is it? Come on. Out with it. Who killed Blackie? You saw the whole thing. No, I didn't. I was never at that racetrack. Come on, you sap. You're going to do 20 years for your part in this. You're in on it. You took those two mugs out of the track in your cab, didn't no, you? No, I didn't. I, I never saw those fellows in my life, I tell you. We have three witnesses who said that they saw you with them all that afternoon. They can identify you. Now, if you want to make it easy on yourself, you start talking and talk fast. All right. I brought Blackie and Joe out to the track. We all worked for Moran. The boys got in an argument about some money. Blackie started to fight with Joe, and then he went for his gun. Who went for his gun? Blackie. He always carried a rod. He was Moran's torpedo. Oh, yeah? Then what happened? Well, they started wrestling around, and Joe was trying to keep Blackie from shooting him. They was both fighting for the gun. Then it went off. Blackie went down, and Joe beat it on the run. Well, that's better. All right, Mac. Take him out. This really belongs to you, Dad. If Dad could only see this, maybe he can, Kathleen. Yeah.